The fact of the matter is that I know very little about art. I don't come at it with a critical eye. The most I know is that there are different genres, different time periods, some of which I'm drawn to, others less so. But beyond that, my response to art is very much a gut reaction. Certain pictures I like, and others I don't. Simple as that. So my knowledge base is very limited, but I think I know this, that to properly appreciate a painting, you've got to step back. If we're too close, it's difficult, if not impossible, to see properly. If I'm going to see the big picture, everything that the artist intended Yes, I need to step back. It's a matter of perspective. These two pictures illustrate the point perfectly. If you home right in on one particular piece of the painting, you might think it's a painting of a dog. But in fact, the dog is just a small part of something that is much bigger in scale. You'll get that unless you step back, unless you get everything in perspective. If it's true that we need to step back to fully appreciate a painting, then I'd want to suggest that it's equally true for all of life as we try to see it in its fullness and, if at all possible, make sense of it. And if you really want to begin to ponder the big questions about what's it about and where's God in all of it, then absolutely, you need to step back. Well, stopping might be difficult, but certainly we can slow down 
and understand that we are in a long game, not a sprint. I want to suggest that we need to do the following. We need to pause. We need to be patient. We need to focus on the permanent and not just the passing. And we need to persist. Number one, pause, which can be so difficult when life is lived at such a pace. There seems to be little time to step back. I think many folks have worked harder in these last nine months than ever before. And if not in offices and in workplaces, then from one Zoom meeting to the next, go, go, go. Friends, take some time to pause. Even in the midst of the busyness, it's good to pause for a moment to appreciate that which is a little more enduring than most of what competes for our attention. God acts. God makes good on every promise. God is completing the big picture. It's just that his timescales are of a different order to ours. That's why we have to be patient. When I phone a business or a call centre, I want someone to pick up right away not to tell me I'm in a queue. When I'm web browsing, I want instant connection. Don't show me the wee arrow going round and round and don't even start with traffic jams or Scott Rail is sorry to inform you that your train is delayed by half an hour. I mean, I've got a life to live, stuff to do, people to see, places to go. You know, I'm in a hurry. Let's get this thing moving. Reading the Bible, I never get the impression that God was in too much of a hurry. Think about Abram, for example. He was 75 years old when the promise was made to him, a promise repeated three times that he would be the father of a great nation. Don't you think that maybe in the 25 years between promise and fulfillment that he began to wonder if it was going to come to pass? Or what about the people of God in exile? 70 years removed from Jerusalem. You think they wondered? Do you think they doubted, maybe, whether or not God was going to come through for them? Or the thousand years between David and Jesus? No, God's not in any hurry. He's working on the big picture. And that requires us to be patient in trusting him.
So we pause, we be patient, and we remember that that which is permanent is equally as deserving of our attention as that which is passing. Now, of course, this modern day building is much more recent, but there is evidence that there's been Christian worship here for 1,300 years. Can you imagine what's happened through all of that time? While people have worshipped on this site, there have been wars, famines, plagues, revolutions, reformations, unions, ups and downs, comings and goings, blessings and curses, sin and salvation, all of life and death. Even today, all of life streams past this holy place. And the backdrop to all of that, the eternal God, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We're reminded we blossom and flourish as leaves on the tree and wither and perish, but not changeth thee. Much passes, but much remains. So there was Simeon, a God-fearing man, waiting for the salvation of his people. How long he waited, we've no idea, but he never gave up on the promise made to him by the Spirit that he would not die before seeing the Messiah, the coming of the Lord. The grass withers, the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Simeon persisted. And beside him, Anna, the old prophetess, no doubt written off by many as an old fool. There she was, worshipping, fasting, praying, waiting, trusting that God would deliver on his promise. That's persistence. Is your apple juice there, sir? Lovely. Thank you. Thank you very much. No worries. Folks, the big picture is that God always keeps his word. Abraham and Sarah were able to have a son. The exiled peoples were able to return to Jerusalem and there to build the city walls. And a descendant of David was born, Jesus, Emmanuel. And Anna and Simeon were able to see that for which they had waited so long. Simeon declared, for mine eyes have seen the glory that you have revealed, which you have prepared. What about us? Will we pause? Will we exercise patience? Will we keep an eye fixed on the permanent and not just that which is passing? And like Anna and Simeon, will we persist that we might see that God is acting, that God is with us? that the salvation of the Lord is among us, that his kingdom is coming little by little for those who have eyes to see. I know in the thick of it, 
it can be difficult. But let us step back that we might see the whole scene of what God has done, of what God is doing right now, and of what God will do in all the days to come. That's the big picture. Amen. And may God bless us in our reflecting.